Aloha, this is Chris Leatham, and this is The Economy and You. This is Take Two. We had a little trouble with our camera equipment. Hi, thank you for joining us today. Our guest is Meili James from Blue Startups. And today I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the extraordinary things that uh, Blue Startups is doing. You know, we talk a lot about Hawaii being a difficult place to do business. And one of the challenges, of course, is a highly regulated environment and the high cost of doing business. But you know, even in a tough environment like Hawaii, it's still possible to start new enterprises, especially when you have the incredible young people that we have here who are so full of ideas and, uh, and ambition. And uh, so, Melly, thank you for joining me today on, uh, on the show. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yes. And, and uh, so, you know, Blue Startups is kind of an interesting organization. Um, you've been around for how many years now? We launched our first cohort in the spring of 2013. So uh, we are just graduating our fourth cohort and uh, recruiting for our fifth right now. Wow, that's amazing. And so um, I'm sure it's been a pretty interesting and exciting experience. Um, and you're dealing with lots of really uh, talented young people who, um, you know, some might say a little naive, but you know what? It's that in incredible enthusiasm that has them, that the enthusiasm that they have that seems to override whatever naivete they may have about doing business. Absolutely. And uh, of course, that's why you're in the picture is because you take these people who are very idealistic with young, young, with fresh ideas and kind of give them the tools that they need in order to achieve success. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're a mentor-driven program. Um, we love, the, like exactly what you were saying, we love the enthusiasm. Um, a lot of them know kind of they don't know what they don't know. So we, we kind of love using that term. Yes. Um, you don't know term. what you don't know. <laughs> um, and them just being really excited and open to learning and really taking their uh, company to the next level. You know, you, um, I just, I'm a little curious. You know, Blue Startups, as you say, just launched their fir first cohorts in 2013 or 2013. Mm -hmm. So what made you, how did you get involved in this kind of thing? I'd like to know a little bit about the background of, of how you sort of got started and, and how th all this sort of came to be. Okay, well, um, so Blue Startups was actually got in motion a lot earlier than I got involved. Um, Hank Rogers, our, our founder, um, and his daughter Maya, uh, you know, came up with um, some ideas around how they could help companies in ways that he was never helped as a young entrepreneur. That's right. Um, now he's, he's the gentleman that started the Tetris? Tetris, yes. Okay, so, great. So we're up at um, Tetris headquarters, Blue Planet Software, oh. um, up in Harbor Court here downtown. Um, and they had some, some uh, extra space in the office because one of the companies had moved up to a different floor. So, um, you know, it was kind of all the right things happening at the right time. For me, uh, I had been living in the Bay Area for about 11 years. Um, started a couple of my other, my own companies there mm -hmm. starting in 2007, um, more in the mobile app space. Mm -hmm. Moved back here um, about six months before I got a phone call. Um, to uh, to see if I would be interested in helping to run the program at Blue Startups. Wow. So it was just sort of a, a call out of the blue? Um, so actually, Ray Chung Fujihira with Box Jelly and I are childhood friends. Oh, and uh, okay. we had reconnected. I know Ray. He's awesome. Yeah, so um, our dads are very good friends from high school, actually. Oh. Um, and so we had kind of reconnected when I moved home. Um, and I had launched another company here called Hawaii Apps mm -hmm. when I first moved home, just building mobile apps for local businesses. and seeing how I could get myself integrated with the community here and with a lot of the work that I had already done in the Bay Area. So um, he, he called me and he was working with Blue. He's one of the founders of Blue Startups. Okay. And um, called me because he thought, you know, hey, Melly would, could potentially be a great person to help run the program um, and knew my background. And, you know, the thinking was, you know, behind everyone's thinking was, well, she's already had so much experience as an entrepreneur, has built her own startups, mm -hmm. has lived in the valley, has the connections. Yes. Um, she would be a great person to know what the companies need because she's already gone through it. So, but so. I'll bet it's still been a learning process even for you. Absolutely. So it's, it's been really interesting being on the other side of the table. Uh -huh. You know, I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm no longer the one asking for the money. I'm the one, you know, helping to evaluate the teams that we should be giving money to and also helping them grow um, in an accelerated fashion, which is what an accelerator is. Right. Um, so that's, that's been a huge learning curve for me over the past few years. So you, your organization is referred to as an accelerator. Yes. So as an accelerator, let's define what an accelerator is for those people, because this is sort of a 101 mm -hmm. on, on what you're doing. So as an accelerator, if you're a young person out there in the world and you have a business idea, um, where do I begin? 
Or yeah, so where does that person begin? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So there's kind of two parts to it. Um, one, there's the various stages of a startup's life, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in the past, before accelerators came into existence, um, especially in Hawaii, there would be, you've got, you know, a great entrepreneur, they may have found a, someone to partner with as a co-founder, mm -hmm. um, maybe had some savings, um, had a flexible job, um, had some friends and family money, and kind of built the startup as far as they could go, and then typically either kind of didn't work out or they had to move to the mainland. Right, exactly. Right, because there was really, um, there were really no kind of organized resources here. We had, we've had great, great people here that have been extremely successful, but I think um, never before had it really been organized in kind of a mentor fashion as to, you know, there we've got these types of people in PR, these types of people in law, these types of people in business that could actually really help these startups um, get through some of these early stages. And because that, and there's, that, there, know. I mean, today it's a very difficult and technical world. Um, you know, if you're, if you're doing a new product, mm -hmm. Questions, of course, about licensing, copyright, uh, financing. Where do you go to get financing? Uh, what kind of legal loopholes do you have to make sure that your product isn't infringing on somebody else's copyrights that might already exist out there? Or um, what do you call it, patents? Yes, patents. So um, these are all a lot of challenges that you face today. Uh, there are a lot of challenges, person. and there's the right way to do them. Yes. And the people who've done them before know what to do. And the people who haven't done them before can make a lot of costly mistakes, yes. whether that's with time or with money. Uh -huh. So, and both um, are really painful, so yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so that's, um, as I was saying, in the past it had been, you know, a startup got to a certain point here in Hawaii and then kind of, if they wanted to keep growing um, and get the, some of those other resources, had to, basically had to move away. Yes. Um, and so what happened once the accelerators came into existence, Blue being the first accelerator that came to, that, that started in Hawaii, mm -hmm. what it did was allow people who had these great ideas, who had gotten started, to be able to then get access to these resources and super early stage funding to keep growing. So they don't fall off the vine. Yes. So in other words, they can continue to sort of get over some of the challenges and hurdles that might otherwise be unforgiving and cause their business idea to collapse. Absolutely. Now they're getting that advantage of somebody helping them get over some of those challenges Absolutely. and keep moving forward. So that really sounds very promising. Um, are we having a lot of success with this now? We are. Um, so with Blue, we've invested in 33 companies so far, of which two-thirds, so 22 of those companies have been local, wow. which is amazing. Wow, um, that is amazing. Yeah. So of the, of the I'll, I won't actually consider the 10 that we just um, invested in, so let's just call it the 22 that have been full alumni. Okay. Of the right. 22, okay, that's fine. Yeah, we can um, uh, we've raised over $13.5 million in wow. follow-on funding, which is huge. That's that's how we um, really gauge our success, is uh -huh. the amount of follow-on funding. Now, where is this funding being sourced from? Is this funding coming from local uh, businesses or local investors, or is it mostly coming from the mainland? It's coming from both. Is so it? we have okay. a really active angel network here in Hawaii, the Hawaii Angels, who have been around for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and what's great is the accelerator, Blue Startups, and now we have other accelerators like Accelerate UH. Uh -huh. um, and That's an exciting program too, isn't that it? That is a, a very exciting yes. program. You We've know, commercializing the IP coming out of the yeah. university. There's just these amazing ideas. Uh -huh. And Sultan Ventures um, is, is doing an amazing job putting together this program for, for you, with UH. And you know, it would seem to me, if you're a young entrepreneur and you're looking for a university to attend, if you have a university that's there to help mentor you, not only just give you sort of the theoretical knowledge, but if you've come up with a great idea, you actually have ingrained or in, embedded within the university facilities that would help you to grow and build your, your, your education into something more promising in, in terms of a new business. Mm -hmm. um, I would think that that would make, um, if I'm trying to pick a university to attend, that might um, make all the difference in Definitely. my decision making. Definitely. I mean, th there's just so much coming out of the university and to be able to commercialize it and turn that into an actual business mm -hmm. where it's not just this you know, amazing research that just kind of just sits there. Uh, being able to actually use it um, and have it be used in the world and, and do good um, is, is, is really, really beneficial and an amazing experience. Yeah, me. I think, and you're seeing the, the, the students themselves really enjoy the university experience even mm -hmm. more. They're getting much more, oh, they're walking away from that experience with much more than they would have had they not had that. Uh, yes, and through PACE and Accelerate UH and all of these different mm -hmm. programs, the students learning about entrepreneurship and being able to, when they graduate, 
kind of see the world in a way that's, you know, they're entrepreneurs, they're problem solving. Yeah. They've got all the tools necessary uh, to, to jump into a startup, to start up their own company. Um, and that, that's really liberating and, and, and just a great experience for them. Yes, yes. Well, I think we're going to go to commercial for a minute. We'll be right back. Uh, I'm Chris Leith of Business uh, Manager James, and this is The Economy and You. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Aloha. I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Hi, this is Chris Leatham. This is The Economy and You. Thank you for uh, staying tuned. Um, today's guest is Mayla James from Blue Startup, uh, HVCA. Um, and we're talking uh, sort of about how um, a young person who has an idea where they might go and get started with um, uh, getting the help of Blue Startup to, say, launch a new enterprise. And so let's talk a little bit about um, sort of where the application process begins, how that process gets moving forward. Uh, I noticed on your website there is a place where you have, on the bluestartups.com mm -hmm. website, you have a place where people can uh, fill out an application online. Is that right? Yes. So um, we have certain times during the year we're open for applications. Mm -hmm. That's twice a year. Uh, we actually just closed applications. Say it isn't so. I think you on just Friday. <laughs> Before but the show. but okay. if, if anyone is, is, is watching the show and really interested in yes. joining our cohort, Five, which starts in um, mid to late February, uh -huh. um, they can definitely email me at, um, I, can I say my email? You can say okay. your email. You feel comfortable. <laughs> Melly, M-E-L-I, at bluestartups.com, and uh, we will absolutely take a look at your application. Well, that's very nice of you to do. That's very nice. I know it's that's sort of bad timing when you have a show right after something like that. Well, we're extending out, you know it for what? you, we'll Chris, so okay. we're all good. Awesome. We're all good. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so, so they fill out an application, and then yeah. what happens? So they fill out an application. It's, it's not very extensive. We do get a lot of applications. We always take a very special look at our Hawaii applications, of course, because we are looking uh -huh. to really help grow local startups here. Um, so, at least for me, it really helps when we, we do these three-minute videos. They do a team three-minute video, and this uh -huh. is absolutely not edited and professional. It's, it's really just your iPhone camera, and you can just do a video like that. Um, but to kind of help us get through the process quicker. So, uh -huh. talk a little bit about your team, a little, about, a little bit about your company, mm -hmm. about competition, your revenue model, some very, very basic questions. Um, and you go through a two to three part interview process where we have our screening committee um, that takes a look at, at the company and asks questions. Okay, so this is actually a, a, a live interview. Is it over the phone or? The first interview is over the phone okay. or over Skype. The second interview um, is over Skype if the team is national or international. Okay. Um, it's in person if they are local. Okay, very good, yeah. very good. Okay, excellent. So now they do the interview. And let's say you just like what they're doing. Then what, what happens if uh, you decide that there's somebody that you want to, to add to the cohort? What should they expect and what are your expectations mm -hmm. of them? So we expect that the team, um, at least one member of the team is at Blue Startups full time. So okay. this is definitely not a program for people who have a full time day job and are working on this on the side. Okay, all right. So, um, and the reason why we also have uh, some of the seed funding that we offer is to allow people who, who, who do have a day job for them to be able to take time off um, to work on their, on their start full time. So we do the 20,000 mm -hmm. investment. Um, we, have a, we take 6% equity in the company. And really that's about the, the program. So okay. the 6% is in no way, shape or form the equivalent to twenty thousand dollars. So it's a no way evaluation. Okay. Um, it, it's really the six percent is is an accelerator model, um, and that's really because of the program and what you're getting out of the program. So if the company makes billions of dollars, then that little six percent, of course, will carry you a very long way. Well, it? that's the hope. That's what, that's why we're here too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So okay. um, so basically, it's it's a full time program. We have workshops in the morning. We have office hours in the afternoon. We have access to about 80 mentors, okay. um, 
a lot of them local, some in the Bay Area, some internationally. Um, and it's just a, it's just an intensive accelerator. So what are they learning when they're when they're coming into these these classes mm -hmm. and working with you? What kind of things are they learning about? They're learning about how to grow a scalable company. Okay. So so what we're looking for are capital efficient, meaning it doesn't take ten million dollars to grow to build a company. So typically not you know biotech or something like that. Okay. Um, oh, and we're also looking for scalable companies. So that meaning that means high growth. Um, companies that are looking to uh, service the global market or national market, not just the local Hawaii Not just Hawaii the local market. Hawaii market. So, you know, okay. a corner bakery, um, something that's more of a lifestyle company. Yes. Um, and that's absolutely wonderful, and people can make a lot of money doing that. But that doesn't fit your profile. That doesn't fit our profile, and it also doesn't typically fit um, a company that investors are looking to invest in. We're looking for companies that we can get, you know, a 20x exit from. Our investment, at so least. twenty times, 10 twenty to times, twenty times, ten to twenty yeah. times. But you know, one of the interesting things about jobs in the high tech space is they also have a multiplier effect for other jobs. Absolutely. So you know, somebody opening up a cookie store, that's great. They they've got a job. They maybe hire one or two more people to help them, but there's not a there's not a really a multiplier effect associated with mm -hmm. that. However, in the high tech space, there's a seven times multiplier. The highest multiplier yes. of any industry. Yes, is that right? The highest. Okay, so that's excellent. So, and of course, one of the challenges that we face in Hawaii is that we raise too many of our children for export. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't intend to raise our children for export, but as a matter of fact, um, our kids grow up and there aren't necessarily, when they go to college and come back from college, there aren't necessarily good or well paying jobs for them to return home to. So, uh, a lot of them return back to the mainland to go find jobs where they can make a good living. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're, you know, they have grandchildren, and you're a grandparent, you don't get to go and play with your grandkids unless you fly all the way to the mainland. So uh, it may be a little bit selfish, but I have two children, that, two daughters that have attended college now, and they're working on the mainland. I'd love for them to come home and be able to make their lives here. That way, I can spoil grandchildren and give them back at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the day when they're tired and exhausted and cranky. Yeah, and, and that's really our dream and what we're trying to do here with Startup Paradise, um, and that's kind of more in my role of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association and what we're trying to do to really grow the innovation sector here uh -huh. um, and help support all of the different efforts going on with building building many different types of resources that can help grow the sector. Yes, and you know, we're placed geographically, we're placed right in the middle of the Pacific. So in terms of a launching, uh, a launch point for Asia, where else is better than Hawaii? Yes, yes, so uh, that, that's my thing. So I, I guess, you know, um, the question is then, what do we need to do in order to continue to grow our high-tech ecosystem? What kind of policies, what kind of things do we need to be doing or ensure that are happening in our state so that the, the, the dream that, that you're working toward and building, that we can continue to realize over the next decade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a, that's a great point. So we're actually hosting a luncheon this Thursday, which would be tomorrow. I signed up for that, by the way. I did see that. Yes, Thank I you. did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's actually in Pioneer Plaza, so just upstairs from here. Yes. Uh, at, at the Plaza Club. Um, and that's, that's going to be a panel and community discussion about the 2015 legislative agenda and what it means for the innovation um, economy. Uh -huh. uh, and also a community discussion as to what our current and future needs are um, so maybe we can make some changes for 2015 if that's possible. Well, you know, one of the things that I have looked at and, and just one of the items that I have seen that I feel that I have seen, and, and Sonny Bagualia, who was the previous CIO under the Abercrombie administration, brought this up, is that we have not brought any new fiber optic into Hawaii for nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. So um, if we want to improve capacity and we want to continue to be a place where uh, new technology can, can thrive, then one of the, the clear issues that we need to address is infrastructure. Absolutely. So um, although I don't think we've got any bills written, we might get together and see if we can write a bill on that and get that pushed in over at the legislature. Chris, can before. you write that bill for I me? I can write that bill. We'll work together. We'll get that bill written. Maybe we can get some help from one of our good senators or members of the House. Yes, and, and we do have some of them attending tomorrow, which is great that they'll be hearing you know, from the community. Um, I think you know that's kind of part of the discussion for tomorrow is is, is fiber optics, is broadband something that we really, really need to push right now? Yes. I think um, we all have this dream of what the innovation economy and what this could look like, you know, as Honolulu, the next Silicon Valley, or that 
maybe a couple steps, you know, before that. But for us to get from where we're at, where we are right now to there, uh -huh. there are some major, major policies and other, um, whether they're tax incentives or things like that, um, to to get us there. Well, you know, New York has been. Uh, I don't know if anybody watches CNBC, but uh, I don't know if I can say that. Uh, anyhow, if uh, if anybody's watching the financial news networks, but uh, New York startups is promoting. Um, New York as a state where you can come and do business there for, for the next 10 years, pay no property taxes, pay no income taxes, nothing. Basically, what they're going to do is give you a free ride. Mm -hmm. um, of course, when you have competition between states, um, and we're not, we need to be competing also because we need to be in the game. Yeah. You know, we, we are not a manufacturing base in Hawaii. We are never probably going to manufacture automobiles or, or big power plant systems or anything like that. It's just not conducive yeah. to being on an island. So the question is, what, are, what is conducive to our growth here? And clearly, technology is an area where we have very little resistance, and we can attract some of the best and the brightest. Who, I mean, you know, everybody wants to come live in paradise, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think um, we need to play to our strengths. Yeah, I think um, you're right. It's, it, we're a perfect place for high tech, um, for startups, for companies. Um, uh, in the innovation sector. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, to your point of, you know, we, we definitely do a great job with grooming all these fabulously smart children and then they all at the age of 18 go away to college and, and aren't able to come back. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many um, parents and students I've spoken with, even, you know, people my own age or my younger sister's age are, you know, calling me or emailing me, hey, I'm back for the holidays. I'd love to sit down with you and see if there's anything that I could do here. You know, I'm in this. I'm in a. I'm working for a startup in the Bay Area. I'm working for a startup in New York. I really want to move home, but I never thought I could. This is giving me inspiration that where I think I can. Right. And that's amazing. Where they're hearing about what we're doing here at Startup Paradise. They're reaching out. They're interested in coming home. Now we just have to keep building this. Yes. And part of that is, you know, through the legislature and, and getting some of these things passed so that's making it easier to build. That's right. That's um, right. And so that we can start seeing some of our Kamaiana come home and really building this amazing innovation sector with smart people being able to come back, anyone really being able to come back and having this great multiplier effect and just seeing uh, just more business here. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, I want to talk about some of your su successes. We're seeing some um, already some interesting com companies sort of coming to age. Um, now, one little company is called Volta. Yes. Uh, and Volta is a solution to um, the transformation of our economy from uh, petroleum-based um, vehicles to electronic or electrical-based vehicles, right? So oh, they wait. So sorry. What did you just say? The, well, to go from cars that use gas to cars yes, that use yes. Electri electricity. Yes. Okay. So we're in that transformation. Of course, cars need to plug in somewhere. Mm -hmm. So here comes Volta. So tell us about Volta a little bit. So Volta um, creates uh, you know free electronic vehicle charging stations in front of uh, various places like Whole Foods. Other mm -hmm. park parking spaces, you know, at all Moana and different places like that. Yes. So you're able to get a stall, charge your vehicle for free. Um, it is an advertising-based model. So you know they place a couple ads on the on the charging station, and you get to top off your electric vehicle for free. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So it's not meant to be plugged in overnight, but if you're there for an hour or so, and you're yeah, doing some I don't shopping, think that the, just, the advertisers would be very happy about <laughs> one car being plugged in there overnight. Yeah. So it's definitely yeah, yeah. about eyeballs. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So they're use, but they're using an advertising medium in order to provide the electricity and get the word out about uh, their advertisers. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. And then. Um, and what's exciting about them? They mm -hmm. were in our first cohort. Um, have done I incredibly well. I believe they just raised another 4.5 million in follow-on funding. Wow! Um, and they're they're now in the Bay Area and, and kicking butt. Can so I they're that? Can expanding I say that outside of Hawaii. <laughs> they are expanding outside of Hawaii, which is a good thing. Yes. Um, it, 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 at Blue Startups, and I think what we're trying to do here is it's not about okay, well we're going to give you some funding and you have to stay here. Because if it doesn't make sense for the business to stay here, they can't grow. Right. We're not at a place where we can actually follow the company through all the growth, the stages, until an exit mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that, that you have in the Bay Area or other places. So, so for us, it's, it's amazing that the accelerators are in existence now. We do have some seed funds that have now popped up in the last two years. Okay. We do have the angel network. We are, we're getting slowly towards these next stages, but we're not there yet. We're not doing, you know... 
C rounds or, you know, uh -huh. all these other ten, series A, series B, series C, all those. Um, and, and so for them, if they need to be over there, that's, that's okay. Yeah. And we're happy and we're, right. we're so excited that they're, they're, they're still seeing success and they're growing. You know, but time, over time, we'll, we, we will, I anticipate we will achieve critical mass, uh, a place where we can do A, B, C rounds of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, you know, but you have to start somewhere. And of course, you're leading the charge on this, which is fantastic. So um, thank you for that. So now, there was an interesting company um, the other day uh, we, when we had the uh, Angel Startup um, session over at the UH Cancer Center. Yes. There was a company called um, Sagely. Can you tell us a little bit about what Sagely is doing? Yeah, so Sagely um, is a really interesting company, and, I, and we see this as actually being a great example of what we'd like to see more mm -hmm. of. Um, we have some, um, some amazing industry expertise in, in, in a lot of fields here, and Sagely is a spin out from Team Praxis. So it's a spin out of a company that's um, been successful here. Um, in, a, in a particular industry. Now, Team Praxis has developed um, software for medical billing. Mm -hmm. um, they've had a medical billing platform for, for a number of years. Um, it's fairly easy to use, and I think it's been adopted by a lot of uh, private physician offices. Uh, in fact, I implemented it at a company over in Waipahu, so I, that's how I'm familiar okay. with it. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great product. So that's actually something that we're, we're working on building uh, through HVCA as well, is mm -hmm. really connecting the business community with what's going on in the innovation economy. So tell us, what does Sagely do? So Sagely, uh, their first product basically um, makes online the, the, the communication and kind of clipboard information that the nurses who are managing and, and handling um, elderly facilities. So if you have um, a, a father that's in a, you know, in a retirement center, uh -huh. instead of you know, kind of coming in once a day or once a week and saying, oh, how was your day? you're actually able to communicate much better through um, these clipboards and the nurses and hearing what they're doing if they're getting in too much salt or you know how their mm -hmm. exercise class was that day so it's okay. really about that engaged um, so it's kind engagement. of engagement it sounds like a kind of a near real-time tracking mm -hmm. of how your your uh, your parents or grandparents might be doing or whoever you are as a responsible party for this individual to ensure that they're getting the stimulus and the care that, that, that you're paying for or that they deserve to have. It's not only that, but it's also being able to engage with them. So when you do walk in and say, hey, Dad, you know, how was that, that swim class this morning? Yeah. Or, hey, how yeah. was that that's pudding? Awesome. Or, you that's, know, that's, just, awesome. that's Instead yeah. of just, how was your day? Right, right. So, and obviously that's kind of the first phase of the company. There's, uh, there's different stages through, uh -huh. through big data and some other things that are going to be very interesting as well. But that's the initial product. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic, mm -hmm. actually, because, you know, sometimes, too, and if you see things that are going on that maybe are of concern for you, um, then if you're that person's caregiver, you know, sort of their, their secondary or primary caregiver, then you have some ability to, 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 to maybe communicate with the physician uh, about what's going on with that person uh, to make, or their dietitian to even make sure that they're getting what they need. Absolutely. So that's pretty good. That's pretty amazing. Um, so now, are there any other startups or any other? Oh, I did want to ask you about the Entrepreneur and, and, uh, and Deal of the Year Awards. Yes. Now, that's a little bit different. So what, what is that for and what is that? What is that uh, yeah. So that's, um, that's an award ceremony that HBCA has been doing for this will be our 15th annual. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, big deal for us this year. Okay. Um, HBCA has been around for over 25 years. Now, what is HBCA? The Hawaii Venture Association. Capital Association. Hawaii Venture Capital Association. Yeah. You know, so, there's just so many acronyms out there, I so know. I want to make sure we understand what that acronym is. We're, the, we're the acronym, though. No. Uh, okay, all right. So, okay. Um, Very good. So what we do is we bring together the business community, entrepreneur, and investor communities together uh -huh. through educational networking events. Um, and so one of our biggest events um, is the Entrepreneur and Deal of the Year Awards. And this year we're partnering um, with a large publication, going to do a large spread on the winners. So we have six categories or seven categories. We're actually open for nominations. You'll all be getting an email very soon about okay. this. Okay. Well, so let's you, talk about the, We're going to so go to commercial. Okay. Oh, we're going to go right, and we'll be right back. This is uh, The Economy and You. I'm Chris Leatham, your host, and today's guest is Melee James. And stay tuned. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the 
the basis of what's right, what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Welcome back. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham, your, your host. Uh, the show is called The Economy and You. Uh, sometimes I think we ought to call the show The New Economy and You. We have so many guests that are talking about uh, technology and what's happening on going on in the, um, in the high tech space and uh, what we're doing in the economy and how that impacts our economy. Uh, today's guest is Millie James. Um, we've been talking about uh, uh, blue startups and uh, sort of giving a, sort of an overview of the issues around how somebody would uh, get started if they wanted to seek uh, blue startups help in launching a new business idea. Uh, we're also talking, we've talked a little bit about some of the successes and uh, now um, we're talking about um, uh, this Deal of the Year Award, Entrepreneur Deal of the Year Award. And uh, so maybe you could repeat that last little bit again, just yeah. the sort of where we left off. So so really the awards, um, like I was saying, this is our 15th year doing it. Wow. And it's really to celebrate the successes that we've had and that we're seeing here in Hawaii and, and really celebrate them. Mm -hmm. um, so so the, the, uh, the awards category is that people, it's an open nomination. Okay. So anyone can nominate themselves or someone else. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and uh, can I mention another public a sure. publication? So PBN has partnered with us, okay. and they'll be doing a large spread on all the winners. And, and really, it's about engaging the business community and, and Hawaii as a whole and really seeing the amazing things happening here in the innovation sector. So, so the two big awards are the Deal of the Year, of course. Okay, Deal of the Year. And Entrepreneur of the Year. And Entrepreneur of the Year. And then okay. we have other categories um, like... Uh, Let's see, Tech Entrepreneur of the Year, Social Impact Entrepreneur of the Year, Clean Tech Ag Entrepreneur of the Year, Student Entrepreneur of the Year, and Life Science Entrepreneur of the wow. Year. Wow, wow. So I had to kind of read those names. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. So, oh, so and the reason why we're doing these, these other categories is because there, there's just so much actually going on here. I think so much more. We're, we're really ramping up right now, uh -huh. and we want to, to really celebrate all of these successes that, that have been going on. And you know what? It, it also provides a real recognition to these companies, and when people find out what they're doing and you, and you sort of highlight them, it gives, um, gives them sort of some free advertising, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, to continue to promote what they're working on and their ideas. And sometimes it also sparks innovation or ideas for other people. Absolutely. Who maybe, you know, and, and the thing is, it's sort of a compounding effect, because as you develop one technology, people see that, then other people come back in and they say, you know what, I can build something off of that. Or even it's about the students. I, I think that so much, you know, when I was growing up here, mm -hmm. I'd never met an entrepreneur before. Or even the students here, that we have so many amazing companies and entrepreneurs here. And to be able to see, wow, that company is really interesting. Mm -hmm. I want to meet that person. Maybe they could be my mentor or I can just chat with them about their experience. But to be able to really highlight those things that are happening, mm -hmm. I think will be incredibly motivating and, and inspiring for a lot of the people that are living here that, that may have an idea and are waiting to pull the trigger to, yes. to get started with it. That's right. You know, in, in India, you know, here in America, I know when I was younger, uh, kids sort of dreamed of being a rock star or they wanted to be a, an actor or an actress. Uh, in India, you know, if you go to India and you ask kids what do they want to be, they, they talk, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a programmer, I want to develop software, mm -hmm. I want to be an entrepreneur. So, you know, that kind of, um, that mindset is something that I can see developing here in Hawaii. And the more that we talk to young people about um, being an entre entrepreneur, talk about um, the, the excitement and the enthusiasm that comes with working in that space, and just the incredible self-satisfaction that you get of taking an idea and actually working it and building something, you know, that's just fantastic. Yeah. And I think um, when we have these types of awards and we let young people know uh, what we're doing, then we get them excited about it, you know, because not everybody can be a basketball player, <laughs> you know, uh, or a pro football player. Yeah, and it's about making it tangible, actually touching and feeling and meeting someone who's done that. That's right. So it's not just about reading about it or kind of hearing about it, it's meeting somebody that's doing that here in Hawaii and saying, oh, I can do that too. I'm going to go away to college and I'm going to come back or I'm going to go away and, and get some experience, but I know that I can do that here because I've met all these other people doing it here. That's too. right, that's right. You know, and one of the things I wanted to touch on too is that um, 
talking to young women, I mean, somebody like yourself actually becomes a great role model for young girls because one of the things that we do know is that uh, in the high tech space, it's predominantly male. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see, and I try to encourage my, I'm a soft, as a software developer, I try to encourage my daughters to go into uh, writing code and, and being able to write software, but no, no, I didn't get it. <laughs> it didn't happen. But there are other girls who may find that this is an area where um, they can enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, there's a lot of misnomers too. You know, one of the things that people think about programmers is that they sit in a little dark space in front of a computer just writing code all day long. And that's not really true, is it? Well, and it's especially not true here in Hawaii. I, I like to call it like the evolved entrepreneur. So, and I, I, I think I've said this may, maybe once before, but, you know, kind of back in the day it was, you know, the, the engineer in their little cave with the Funyuns and the, yes, and the Mountain yes, Dew yes. and staying up till <laughs> four in the morning and like, you know, yeah, crazy on the right. computer. And, you know, that, that seems pretty unhealthy to me, you know, kind yes. of a, you know, a night, night owl and, you know, sleeping through the day and, you know, eating junk food and just on the computer. And, and I think that's one of the big things that we, we really promote with Startup Paradise and Blue Startups and, mm -hmm. and the other accelerators here is the evolved entrepreneur. You can, you can have a better work-life balance. Yes. Um, do Dawn Patrol, go surfing in the morning and start coding by 10 a.m., like start coding by 9 a.m. Um, you can have that work-life balance and really live a, a wonderful life and not get burnt out um, mm -hmm. and, and, and still, you know, kick butt and, and make some really amazing companies. Yes, yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, you can. And I actually, uh, I've been working on my own software for the last uh, almost two months now. I've been banging out uh, code on the computer and... Uh, yeah, you can have balance. You know, I I, um, I haven't done as well as I should have, but uh, and I've sort of paid the price for it. But you actually can uh, have a balanced life and still write software, work in that space. And the great thing is, there's a lot of there's a lot more interaction. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're working with designers, you're working with uh, people who are helping to develop the business ideas and the marketing and the sales. So programming isn't just sitting there just writing code. It's actually working and communicating with other people because. You know, it used to be, well, we'll just build out a plan and then we'll just develop like that. But today it seems to be a bit more sort of, uh, I don't want to say fly by the seat of your pants, but it's a bit more iterative. Absolutely. That's what, that's what we teach um, at Blue and, and the other accelerators teach it as well. It's about the lean startup methodology, mm -hmm. about customer discovery, getting out of the building. Yes. You know, not just having this idea going off in a cave for six months, building, 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 and then coming out and being, ta-da, okay, it's done. Yes. Now we're all the customers. That's right. So that was, right. you know, the, back in the day, you know, people would do that, spend a bunch of time and money and come out, and it's actually not what people want. So that's really what we teach here. At you mean you spend six months and you build out something where you, you, it's not even what your customers wanted? Well, yeah. that's, pro that's problematic, isn't it? Yeah. So, so we do, part of, the, you know, part of the curriculum is really about customer discovery, talking to your customers, mm -hmm. learning what do they want, what problem are you really solving, um, and getting out of the building, not, not sitting at the computer. Also, too, I think when, you, when you're working and you're interacting with potential customers, they're working as sort of a mentor for you and mm -hmm. giving you feedback, real-time feedback, yes, you know. Um, for example, they say, well, here's a bug. And I'm like, well, that's not a bug, that's a feature, you know. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yeah. beta, beta means, you know, in Latin means my software still doesn't work, you know, so that's what I figured out. Well, so, so that's actually an interesting point um, with, with, with getting customers. Uh -huh. uh, the Hawaii Business Roundtable did this innovation assets report, and I'm just so excited that the Business Roundtable is getting behind innovation and really looking at um, how the, com the business community can support us. And it's not about financial support. I mean, of course, that's lovely too. Yes. But it's about having them being um, supportive and open to innovation, mm -hmm. whether that's, hey, we, we'd be willing to be a beta customer yes. for this. This, this is going to help us. Or, hey, this is actually a problem that we're having in the company, or this is, a, this is something that we need to look at. I don't want to hire 10 people and put them on my payroll. Right. I can now bring on, engage a startup. That's right. And how powerful is that when we can start having the businesses here become beta customers, um, trying to have the innovation economy or startups here, you know, uh -huh. solving a problem for yeah. them. Or even our state and federal government. Yes. 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 Having them become uh, beta yes. testers for And us. I believe that they are becoming a lot more open to that. I've actually had some meetings already with some of the entities of the state and, and, and we're looking at stuff like well, that. Well, that's fantastic because, you know, they have... Um, they have a reputation of not being as open to innovation. Uh, and so if we're starting to see that uh, kind of happen, 
Uh, I think that's fantastic, mm -hmm. and I would certainly encourage that. If you're, if you're a business person out there, or if you're in working government, and uh, you'd like to take advantage of and find out more about what Blue Startups is doing, I think it's a great opportunity, and it's a great, um, it's a, a, a really, it's a real joy to work with these young people. Uh, because they are so enthusiastic, yeah. you know, and they are willing to roll up their sleeves and and and, uh, and just get into it. And mm -hmm. some of the ideas that they have, I think you'll find if you're a business person out there, it will spark even more ideas for you. You know, I I've been working a little bit in the social media space, and it's interesting because as these companies find out what you can do, mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden the sort of the lights go on. And they're like, oh, well, if we could do this, then we could do this, this, yeah. this, and this. Can your thing do this and this also? Yes. Absolutely. You know? uh, not yet, but I can, you yeah. know, we can Just get busy. Give me a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so, so where do you sort of see things going with Blue Startups over the next five years? What, what, what is sort of your dream or the ideal uh, for your organization? Um, so, you know, we're actually raising our second fund right now, uh -huh. um, which is really exciting. We're, we've been very successful. There's a lot of community support. Um, you know, with the accelerator model, we're looking to just continue um, engaging and mentors and resources to help early stage startups. Great. Um, what we're also looking at is helping, especially this is with my HBCA hat, uh -huh. um, some of these later stage funds and later stage um, opportunities for these startups so they can continue growing here. And this dream that we're ultimately seeing of having the innovation economy and sector be a thriving uh, se sector here in Hawaii that's yes. actually, um, you know, up there with tourism and military and, at some and I point. And su I support that dream. Yeah, I that, think that's a great dream. That we've got, we've got a long way to go, but uh, we're, we're doing well. It's, it's amazing what, what, what the community looks like now compared to two years ago. Yes. And um, we're, just, we're just really excited about what's going on here. Well, I think, um, you know, we're almost at the end of our show. Is there any, anything that you would like to leave our listeners or our viewers with? Um, where they can find out more about uh, yeah, the organization? I would say if, if anyone um, that's listening is interested in, in starting a company or they've been kind of toying with an idea and they're not quite sure um, you know, what, what, what to do or where they can go, definitely uh -huh. reach out to us at Blue Startups. Reach out to me at HBCA, uh, melly at bluestartups.com or melly at hbca.org. And I'd be happy to point you in the right direction and, and help and help get you started on your path to startups and entrepreneurship. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melly. I'm, I'm I'm Chris Leatham. This is the Economy and You. Thank you for watching, and um, I hope to see you again next week, Wednesday at noon, um, for another interesting guest. Thank you very much. Uh, how much time do we have left?